All right. I'm Chris, and I'm going to take you through how I rig the wetter and uh, share with you all the tips I can. So we've got our wetter here, um, and I've got my three sail bags and the four bag all set to go as they came off the trailer. So we'll crack into it. So first we undo the Cunningham line which secures the tramps on uh, and the main sheet at the back. I'll also be showing you how to derig the boat and uh, show you exactly how I leave it because that's quite important to ensure a, a quick rig up. So first we start off pulling the floats off. Balance point, have your left hand on the front knuckle and uh, you should be able to lift that quite easily. And then I don't force any of this, it's just a matter of getting the right alignment and pushing it in. Now while I'm here, it's important to save time, so I do as many things as I can. I undo the mast, I'll undo the side stay from the trampoline here, and unravel it. And a trick, I run these over the front of the trampoline and just leave the end dang back. I'll explain that later. Also while I'm here, I can tie the trampoline on. I've left it derigged like this, so I just take the dead end and I tie it through the block here with the bowline. And then loop the line on there. So that leaves me a three to one purchase at the front. Right, other side. So next I want to tension the trampolines, so I'll grab the trampoline from under the sleeve and I'll pull that quite tight, loop it around the block and then this end again, tension it up, put it in the cleat, tramp's good to go. While I'm here I also undo the mask, so this bottom section is free to come off, I'll slide it out and just place it on the boat there, ready to go. Here to the other side, same deal. I just pull this end through, and by pulling the one line, it tensions up the front, loop it around the block, and then tension the back. You'll see the beam slid in a little there. I, I didn't have it all the way in, so the trampoline takes care of that. Got the tension. Next, undo the top section of the mast. Pull that out. All right, and then I just go straight into the bottom section here. Slot it together, make sure it's all aligned. And then I'm just gonna put the mast further up the boat and sit it there so it's nice and stable to run my halyards, which I'll grab now. Okay, got the halyards here. So, firstly, I'll run the jib halyard. So you undo that. Now, big trick is when I de-rig these, I do it in a way that there's no tangles, and that'll make rigging a lot quicker. So I go through there, run down the halyard, and then I actually take it round. I go over Miranda's head, and that halyard goes in the jib roller here. And I just tie a simple reef knot there, that's reasonably tight. Next I run the Jenica halyard. So I've seen people do this different ways, um, and I do it different ways sometimes. So another technique is you just walk out if you've got the space, and you've got the ends together. And then I actually just toss this down the front of the boat, so I don't need to walk around. That saves another 30 seconds or so. It's pretty key when you're trying to set rigging records. All right, lastly, the halyard. Now, feeding this, you want to get it right. You only make this mistake once, is you feed it from the track side through to the front. 
So if you go the other way, you'll find when you go to hoist your main, you'll have a few issues. And that's because the halyard lock will come up, go through the block and lock there. If you go through the other side, you'll find uh, it won't work. So for the main halyard, I just do a similar thing with the Jenica, run down. So I've managed to get a little knot here myself, not so smooth. All right, got that little knot undone. So, we come here. Now, I like to put the Jenica halyard on the mast and do the, the main uh, lastly. And the reason is the main runs over everything, so it's good to keep that separate. So, I tie the Jenica halyard through the cleat, same deal, just a reef knot. I'll leave a tail through there, it's quicker to undo later. Um, and now I put the main halyard on. So it's good to rotate the mast over and check that you have it running s smoothly through the block up there. And I just loop that over there and tie it off a couple of half inches. All right. So next we need the four stay because we're going to put the mast up. So I will drag this up inside the side stays. Now you'll see here I've uh, laid out the side stays beforehand and the reason for that is by draping them over the front of the beams it stops them from catching around the back because often you might find that you catch on the rudder gudgeon here. Um, so this just holds them forward. So we attach the side stays first. And what we want to do is make sure that the, the jib and jenica are in front of the side stays. And the main, just the, the part that pulls the sail up is behind the side stays. So this one goes here. Grab the other one. Let's roll the mast over. Same deal, make sure Jib and Jenica halyards are in front and so I'd say it goes there. Again, you'll see that I just flick that over the back corner of the boat. That is a common problem. I see people catching it on. And then the force stay goes in. You can either put the Jenica one side or the other. I'm going to put it on that side today. And before I walk to put the mast up, you want to make sure that all these T balls are in correctly. So they should be tight down like that and uh, I usually just make sure that they're nice and straight the stays there so there's no risk of them falling loose and coming out. So that's all set to go, I'm happy with that. Time to put her up. So first thing I do is I get the four stay and I'll hold that with one hand on the base of the mast and I use the other hand to lift it so if you struggle putting out the mast, what you do is you actually come further up and it requires less strength. So I'm going to do it that way. And then we just place her up. You can rest it on the ground. Then we shift it towards here. Now, something else, I'm actually rigging into the wind. It's pretty light. The wind's coming this way. Um, if it's really windy, I actually would rig with the wind coming from this direction because it actually helps push the mast forward. All right, next step. So get a nice wide grip on the mast and you can put it up onto the trailer support there firstly. Readjust your grip and, uh, and then we put in the mast step. Now it's really key to keep the mast vertical. As soon as you get it on a bit of an angle, that's when it begets, uh, begins to be heavy to lift. So we lift it up and you'll find that the stay is tension. So we just watch the base here and put it into the step. So it takes a bit of practice, but it shouldn't require a huge amount of strength with the right technique. While I'm supporting my right hand, I just use the force stay, uh, grab the force stay with the other hand, and now we're ready to lash it up. So I've seen all sorts of knots here, but I 
use a few half hitches after going through here a few times. And another trick is to tension it up as you go. I've seen people lash it all up with no tension, then they crank down and it just binds the, the line in there, making it really difficult to tension. So I've gone through twice there and then I'm just going to put a bit of tension on. Now it's always easier to put tension on pushing down as opposed to pulling up. So you see there, if I try and pull tension on, all it wants to do is lift the boat up. So I'll go through there a couple of times. So I'm pretty happy with that rig tension. And then I just do a few half hitches here. And just use up some of that tail there. This is a bit long. Next I run the Jenica. Grab the Jenica bag. I generally just put the prod straight in. And firstly I like to run the furling line. And that's so when we do hoist the Jenica, it can't unfurl and if there's a bit of breeze around. So get the furling line, go through the four stay strop. Underneath the Cunningham line here. And that just means when you pull Cunningham on, it doesn't uncleat it involuntary. And then I clip this on into here. Good to go, and then I'll just click that off. Next I get the Jenica halyard. And we just make sure it's all clear. Again, we tie the halyard on with a simple bowline. And then we can just hoist her up. And I'll just give that a little bit of tension. Now, I coil up the Jenica halyard. I've seen all sorts of ways to do this, but I find the quickest and easiest is just to wrap it around my hand till I've got about that much length. Then I simply grab that, put a loop in the line, and do a half hitch like that, and I'll probably do four or five of them, depending on how much tail I want. And I'm happy with about that much, so I'll leave that there. Next we grab our sheets. All right, I toss that down there, save a bit of time walking. And through the clue, just do a figure of eight, stop a knot on that side. Next walk around to run the sheets. So we've got to make sure we go through the right, right way in these blocks. Uh, I always have mine on pressure sensitive ratchet, so it means that they're free to run until you get a little bit of load, and then the ratchet starts working. Uh, what that does is it means when you furl the Jenica or go for a jibe, you're not fighting the ratchet, but obviously when there's load in the sheets, it comes on. So they're working right. Uh, you'll notice I go inside the side stays, bit different to a lot of other boats and back up to the Jenica through the other side. If you have trouble feeding this through you can actually use the other sheet to help push it so I allow a bit of tail there I sort of semi feed that in and then you pull the other line and it helps pull it through then we do a figure of eight that side and Jenica's ready to go now I'll just fill up that last little bit, find the right line, there it is, and cleat it off. Now there's a number of ways I've seen people do this. Some roll from the top down, others the bottom up. Uh, to me it doesn't really matter so much. Um, I just like to clip it onto the force stay first because if you do get any breeze, just means it's uh, it's already on the boat. It's not going to blow away.
All right, while I'm here, I can put the halyard on. So, leave that cleated. And then we just want to check. Now you'll see there, I've got it inside the main halyard, so I'm just gonna tidy that up, make sure it's all clear. Now, one common problem, which I've seen happen a lot, is when the main halyard is inside the jib, and you won't notice that till you go to hoist your main, and you'll have to drop your jib again. So, just tie a simple bowline on here. And at the bottom, I just shackle that on. And finger tights, all good. Now this um, bottom jib hank here, you don't actually need to have it. Some people like to put it right around the actual lashings there. Um, I've played around with it. it, doesn't seem to make much difference to performance. Then we grab our jib sheet. So what we do is we just feed the ends through the cleat like that. And then we go into the clue position for the day, whatever it may be. Now the first bowline I tie here is quite a loose one. You'll see this in some of the rigging tips I've written. So got that end. I uh, always run the jib sheet over the furling line. I find that keeps the boat tidier. And then second bowline we go through the first one. And that is the jib sheet good to go. Now the reason I do that is if I want to change on the water, I can actually easily undo this one while the other jib sheet's holding the sail so it doesn't flap around. And vice versa. Try it out, you'll like it. Uh, now we can pull the sail up. And as I pull it up, I just double check that I've got all the jib hanks on. Occasionally you might miss one or two. All right. Now, I'll just show you how I do my three to one purchase on the jib, so jib's all the way up. Some people choose to leave a knot permanently in the halyard. Uh, I find tying a new one each time is good. So I just do a couple of loops in the halyard there and feed down the line back through itself. So I've got a loop. It's sort of like a, a trucker's hitch. I'm sure there's some truckers out there which would uh, have a few comments about that. But it seems to do me just fine. And then we go back through the block. See again, you can actually, if you struggle, you can help pull the line through with the other end. And then you'll see I've got my three to one there. So that just helps uh, in adjusting the tension. And same deal as the Jenica halyard. I just take up the tail by wrapping it around my hand and I actually like to leave a reasonable size tail on the jib halyard because it means while you're out sailing you can actually adjust your jib halyard tension if there's changes in the breeze. So that's our jib all, all set to go. Now it's time for the main. Now I'm always a fan of rolling the wet sails from the bottom up. That just means when you come to rig them you can just go straight into the mast track and uh, hoist them up, so I'll just undo the halyard here. Now we want to check that we've got no tangles, I've managed to get that behind the side today. That's all free to roll, shackle it on to the main. Now we're ready to hoist it up, so just uh, as we hoist it, we watch that we don't come out of the feeder there at all. And it's always good to have the boat pointed straight into the wind at this stage. You'll find if it uh, gets quite hard to pull, uh, if the main's at all off centre, it's going to load up the track, so I just push it towards the centre as it comes up. 
Uh, the other thing <coughs> you may notice didn't happen this time, but often that batten will catch on the Jenica sheet there. So you just want to watch that again if it feels a bit tight. So we get the main up and then we lock in the halide. You can see up there how the mechanism works. So to double check that it's all locked in, I just give the tail a bit of a tug down. That's definitely locked. Now we can put the Cunningham on and strap the tack around the mast. And then I just pull a bit of slack out of there. What you don't want to do is crank your Cunningham on while you leave your boat on the beach. Uh, if there's any breeze, the sail is going to flap around a whole lot. And uh, people think they're depowering the sail by pulling Cunningham on, but it uh, doesn't work that way. So I always like to just push up the track a little and that stops it from rattling around. Now we tie the main heliot off. Just go around a couple of times. Now you don't actually want to pull much tension on this because you're relying on the halyard lock at the top of the mast. So this is just to tidy it up basically. Now before I put the Velcro on, I just hook the halyards over the horn there so they can't fall down. Now what I'd normally do now is actually strap the Velcro around that nice and tight. That's good to go. Uh, this is our demo boat and I think Miranda must have ripped it off in a race. It was just too much drag, so I'm going to watch that one. <laughs> Alright, so last thing to do before we go in the water of the main is put it in. I always make sure uh, that the main sheet is uh, fully eased, just in case you do get a, a puff and you're not prepared for it. So I just pull that all the way out. I'll leave it there until I'm in the water and at that point you can hook it into your clue board. I'll grab the foils now. So we normally leave the rudder fully assembled with the tiller extension in the foil bag. Fits quite nicely like that. And putting the rudder on I always just take the top R clip out and then feed it in from the bottom up. Put your R clip in and rudders right on. And then I like to leave the center board just tucked under the hiking strap so she doesn't get away on you. Alright, so ready to go sailing.